Welcome back to another installment of SOC Chat, where we talk to some of our favorite poker vloggers and poker players. In this video, we're talking to Ethan Yao of Rampage Poker. I think you're going to really enjoy this one. Stay tuned. We got more in store for that ass. Stacking on chips high, macking and we get fly. Stacking on chips, gonna push all in, gonna push for it, all in. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Hey, what's, what's going on, guys? Ethan, what's going on, man? Good. How hey. are you, man? <laughs> I'm great. How are you guys? Uh, let's see. Shoot, I'm doing pretty good. Everything sound good on my yeah. end? Yeah, you're coming in loud and clear. Okay, you're sweet. Perfectly. I have to change that. All right. Well, no issues. Yes, That's right? the first. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Um, so Keith is like, uh, I guess, been doing all the uh, interviews. Uh, He's been posting on, the, on his channel, Stacking Out Chips. Yeah. And then Ed is uh, has another channel called the Poker Robots. The poker just so robot. you know, Ethan. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I checked out some of the uh, stacking our chips videos. Really? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That was funny that you that we met uh, at MGM too. Y you I remember that? that? One that you were there. Yeah. I was having was, a was bad a day. Time. I was gonna bring that up, but I was having a bad day. <laughs> My son was sick, and I snuck for a day trip, and I really wanted to see all you guys. But my, my time was running out. I had to get out of there. But yeah, fair enough. So but that's how at least you got went. to make it. Yes. And hopefully oh. um, there'll be chances to uh, link up again in the future. For um, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a hell of an atmosphere. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm kind of still sad that poker room is still not open yet, but that's a different problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, listen, that's a Massachusetts one, thing. Once yeah, Corona sure. ends, we'll start to try to look for uh, like a home base or something, and maybe we'll start to see some live games again and, and live meetup games, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, sure. that'd be sweet. Are all three of you guys pretty local to each other around the north? Are we all? Yeah, the, we're, we're all area? in New York. Yeah, we oh, are in the New York area. So Keith's in uh, Westchester, mm -hmm. Ed's in uh, Long, Long Island, Island, and I'm uh, I'm in the Manhattan Island. Okay, I'm in the city. Sweet. Gotcha. Cool. Of course, we have Rampage, Ethan. Welcome. Awesome. Very welcome. excited. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. We'll start off easy, you know. Um, you know, I I know you started uh, obviously your vlog when you were in college, but how do you got involved with poker in the first place? It's not how something you... that, you know, every yeah. young kid started with. Right, exactly. Like when I was starting out playing in school, I literally didn't have there I maybe met like three total people out of umass amherst which is like in my class which is literally my class is full of like five thousand people and i only met three people that played poker um in my school which is crazy but yeah like not really popular uh for like younger college kids but i uh was like sports betting at the time was just living a very degenerate lifestyle in school you know uh at night would sweat out like baseball basketball games and like would like to play blackjack here and there and then i met a buddy in class that he played poker and like taught me how like oh you like play against other people and it's not against the house and all this stuff i was like all right we'll try uh we were we weren't 21 at the time so we took a two-hour trip to twin river in rhode island and on, like on a sunday day to play some poker he knew what he was doing like he played two five and like mm. on the way i was asking him like how the button works and he was telling me that you have to tip the dealer a dollar every hand you win like all the basic stuff so i like literally knew nothing and we got there played for 30 i played for 30 minutes uh lost 500 dollars like right Ooh. off the rip at one two Ooh. and then i was like hey buddy like i lost like are we gonna we're we gonna go back to school now <laughs> after driving two hours like hey man um i'm out <laughs> but like obviously you don't sit and play 30 minutes of a poker session uh but yeah that was my first introduction a warm welcome to the game and uh i decided like either i was not gonna play again or like maybe i try to get good at it and just like educate myself a little bit so we did that and i went on youtube and tried mm. to figure it out and watched a lot of vlogs and from there uh, that's how I started making videos and playing poker at the same time. Right. Early on, who was your favorite vlog to watch to like study and learn the game? I think the two would just be Nimi and Brad Owen. Those, those same are two for people, me like, as well. Yeah. A lot of people those, say that. Yeah. I mean, that's why they're the most popular too, but they were the two that was mo making the most amount of videos and super personable. And um, yeah, I mean, the only other two videos, the only two other people that was making videos at the time was also Vibes and Jamin, but 
they weren't pumping out the same amount of yes. volume uh, yes. comparatively, but also obviously they're both good guys. And now look at your volume. <laughs> it yeah, seems like it you're We're pumping out videos like every day. We're trying. That's the point. <laughs> Man, right. how how did you build such a machine? And one of your recent videos, I learned that you have an editor working for you. Yeah. Um, That's insane. A, a few months ago, yeah. Hired a good buddy of mine who wanted to start making videos. And yeah. like, I grew up with him. So I knew he made, he would do a good job doing it mm -hmm. and went from there. It just yeah. went to the point where I was spending so much time, especially when I was trying to travel, like editing is just like the worst thing to do, especially trying to make three videos a week. Oof. So I was able to kind of outsource that just a little bit and have a buddy help out. So that kind of kind of takes a lot of load uh, off of my like day to day stuff. I'm lucky if I can make three videos in a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, man. That's why uh, that's yeah. why you got to get someone else to do it. <laughs> I feel it. I got a question. So I my I have my name. It's the Poker Robot. That's an origin story, which the fellows know about it. But I'm curious to know about your origin story for your name. Where does that name come from? Because it's an awesome name. Mm -hmm. Rampage. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm living out my middle school dream of making Rampage a thing. Uh, <laughs> I saw it out on bat in Little League, and so when I so I knew about it when I was like eight or nine years old or something like that, playing baseball in Little League, and then fast forward to like middle school where i was playing call of duty i joined a clan and they were like well you need a name and i didn't have one at the time and then i went with all right i'm gonna be like x clan name rampage and here we are uh still living it out like 10 12 years later however many that's cool, man. <laughs> but yeah. yeah that's that's totally awesome so um now that we talk about your college years so to speak obviously uh springfield was your um home casino after you graduated you actually move on to basically encore right um most of the videos encore let's talk about your encore era so to speak right um obviously it was a brand new room people were excited you were like the first one pumping out videos there which is awesome um but then they stop you right um in a bit so how much did that really impact your growth on your channel do you think uh same with how my channel was pretty well, i mean obviously you start small but the reason why my videos didn't get too much attention early on when i was playing at mgm anyways it's the whole massachusetts gaming commission where you just can't use table footage and i knew the whole time when i was making a bunch of videos at encore that like this channel isn't gonna go to where it needs to go unless i get table footage like no one wants to like watch a video of my face and i don't know table footage just adds so much more Sure. uh production value everything literally yeah. everything like i don't think anyone wants to look watch me talk about hands but luckily enough people did where i was able to at least still try to pump out the content but obviously it the channel started growing exponentially once i got to play in new hampshire and play in different rooms right. but um yeah i mean yeah i i try i did i think i had table footage for the first week first of encore opening up yeah i yeah. think i posted like three and then i got contacted they're like hey you gotta take all that down i was like yeah so close right. i that, almost that, got away with it that was really a bummer it was uh, a good I week that. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, i remember the number pretty much spiked up like crazy uh especially that first couple yeah it was also like i was there at the grand opening i was right. really trying to make this happen and uh it's just a massachusetts thing unfortunately right. but yeah that's why like that's the unfortunate thing of even when encore does come back i'm like i'm like so close like a 15 10 minute drive away Ooh. but I can't record there, so I can't really play there. I don't. I don't think you need to play there. Just that's just my honest right. opinion. But that's a different, uh, different story. Yeah. And and that makes perfect sense. And um, that also well, obviously we got COVID last year. Things got locked down, and then now things reopen. And the fact that you actually get Boston Billiard to let you film everything, uh, how? And I think that. It's completely awesome, and obviously that helped with the growth of your channel because no one else was piping, uh, pumping out any uh, content. Right, yeah. New Hampshire was like one of the first rooms that even let poker be a thing. So I was lucky that, I mean, I think Vegas might have been a close second after New Hampshire, right. but still uh, having that opportunity where I literally had the whole market pretty much um, 
that was nice. That was a good opportunity. And I was just, I was still just trying to hammer out videos and play as much as I can. Right. And Boston Billiard let you do like almost anything at this point. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Having it's, it's so rare, especially on the East coast to have a poker room be so open to filming and letting it happen. Like they are dishing out, uh, like filming contracts or vlogger contracts because a few other people popped up and asked if they wanted to film. So they have like a whole thing set up for them too. So they're super oh, wow. open to it. And, and I can tell you that actually was very beneficial for Boston Billiard because I know before COVID everyone go to Chaser, right? Right. Um, at yeah. New Hampshire. And I would say everyone go to Boston Billiard now. Um, yeah, and that's, it, and that's it helped level the playing field a little bit. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, right. it was helpful. I, I, it was nice to kind of be part of watching their room grow more. Right. And I think you help out a lot of that. And props to you, obviously. And also props to the management there to recognize that a poker vlog can help their uh, business as well. Yeah, I wish more people could recognize it. It's, it seems like a no-brainer. You get free advertising and all you do is literally say yes to someone using your right. phone at the table. Yeah. And right. it's funny because before your vlog came around, I had no idea that this was even uh, a club out there. And now because of you, you know, you're getting all this notoriety. Um, too bad that situation happened with M son, right? Yeah. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a question for you. Um, so you are rampage you play poker what would you be doing if you never found poker like what would your dream job be uh it would be something online something related to youtube i think this poker channel is like maybe the fifth sixth or seventh attempt at building a youtube channel so uh i would still be trying to find something like along the side after like i'd probably be working some normal steady office job after graduating from school and then trying to grind something on the side uh along the youtube or content line because i've always loved making content and i'm glad that uh this whole poker channel is stuck and gained traction where uh i mean it just takes a while to build something and that's that's really it something along youtube because this is not the first time <laughs> of me trying to start a youtube channel and run something yeah, and that's a perfect segue actually, because I know, I know at least two of your other channels. Um, you had a blackjack channel. Uh, I think oh, it's really? called Splitting Deuces. Yeah. And then I know your <laughs> golf channel because you, you posted golf? something on your Instagram yesterday. Oh um, yeah. Any other questions? I got oh, I got I, like a million more. <laughs> All right, you know, let me let me. Uh, hit I don't want to take over the whole thing. Sorry. You're doing very well, Panda. So so. Uh, Ethan, you are a bracelet winner, which is amazing. Um, Such a silly title to hold. I don't I think don't, so. I, think I don't that's, know what I'm doing with poker. It's so I, silly. I have a comment actually <laughs> in regarding that, but first let me get okay. to this first point. So you have a bracelet. It's You showed it on a video. It's magnificent looking. Are you going to wear it at the game? But do you wear it at the games? Do you wear it out? Um, I would, If it was me, I'd be flaunting that bad boy. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I, it hasn't left my house. It's like, just, I think I can find it, but it's, uh, it's just sitting there and yeah, I don't try to like flaunt it or anything. It's just like, I don't know, playing one, three, just sitting like, all right, what's up guys? Like big dick and people. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but that, that bracelet is something you should absolutely be proud of. And yeah, let me no, tell 100%. you a, a lot of people with love and fight for that and you have it. So, I mean, if it was me, if I was you, I'd, I'd be wearing, I'd make a necklace out of it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, no, definitely going to like try to, once I get like my own place or something, I'm trying to find a way to make it like a piece of like some sort of artwork or something around it to yeah. like, display it and make it look really cool. So I didn't watch you play live, but I definitely watched the replay. And I think that whole thing was just so awesome. I was so in tune to what you were doing, man. Yeah. yeah I couldn't that was... sleep that night. <laughs> uh, Pam, were you up? <laughs> I was up till like 2 a.m. with you, oh, and man. I'm like, OMG, I got work tomorrow. I need to get some <laughs> sleep. So I nap for like two hours. I woke up at like 4.30. You're a final table. I was like, oh, my God. I, I can't sleep. Oh, yeah, man. just sweat it out the whole way, man. That was such a late night. Yeah. And your replay was, was like really six good. hours, right, on YouTube? 
Yeah, I was streaming Something for like, like 10 hours. It was, wow. it was really 10 hours and it was a long, long night. But, you know, I watched most of it. it when I was at work, you know, my nine to five. I just had it on. When I looked, when I looked back at it, I swore literally every other word. I was, I was like, so <laughs> like in my own head, yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. how I talked to myself. Cause I was like, like screaming at myself for doing something dumb and I was just projecting it. And I was like, Oh wow, this kid is just going off. I, so, I enjoyed watching it because I, I enjoyed watching you watch the five minute delay because you hit it, you know, you knew you won and then you were just kind of waiting for the, the comments know to do to hit up and I, it was just important for me to watch that yeah i i generally didn't i i think i froze for like a minute or two and i didn't know what to do it was like this, this is it <laughs> like, <laughs> what's like I don't, I don't know what to do i've never won a tournament before so, so was so. pocket fours the hand that won you the whole thing yeah okay okay that makes sense the, for sure the, the key hand wasn't pocket four though the key the hand key. was that age eight in so my silly. Humble opinion. oh yeah that, that was a that sick hand a knocked out two guys Put value you like right up there. I think that was that ace, was the biggest hand. Ace eight all in pre against those kings and ace king, and I was drawing dead on the flop, and I needed a runner runner, and you know it happens. It comes. So you were not drawing dead. <laughs> <laughs> Always <laughs> rely on the runner runner. Almost True. dead. <laughs> so, so in that when you when you played that final hand pocket fours, um, I read in a news article that you quoted this, and I'm gonna refer to the notes. What the quote is. Uh, it says, I need variance to win, uh, not in that you were not going to win it based off of skill. So reflecting back now, after so many vlogs after that, do you feel like that's still the um, uh, disposition of your, your theory, that it was variance? I mean, because it does take skill to get there. Well, I knew like, so I don't know how to play heads up and I still don't know how to play heads up. I think it's silly. I always reflect back like it's so like because I've only played heads up twice uh, in two different tournaments. And I think it's silly where I'm playing for the most amount of money in the arena that I have the least amount of knowledge and experience in. So it's like, why am I playing for I think it was like $60,000. And I don't know what I'm doing. I thought it was ridiculous. But like, obviously, I just I knew he was better than me. Like, I mean, even in the final table, everyone was better than me. Like, I don't have tournament experience. So I knew like, I was just trying to get into a flip situation and hopefully win it. And that happened with fours. So I was just more than happy to get it all in and just pray he didn't have something. Uh, we just go like 55, 45 and hopefully win it. And yeah, so that's still my position now. I still don't know how to play tournaments. I said I was going to study and like work on stuff and that hasn't happened. I was too busy making videos. <laughs> but I, I've also noticed in the South for why episode i'm kind of jumping around you know timeline here but you also mentioned uh you know that you don't want to be found out but judging on your videos and how you talk through the action it seems like you have a very well based knowledge you know i don't think that you're unknowledgeable i think you're very knowledgeable on a we can yeah uh i think it's based on how you like what range and spectrum that you put my poker knowledge on right right when i was when i went to solve for why and like i was listening to other people like when i was listening to landon talk hands with matt vaughn they're like when we were taking breaks and stuff i couldn't even jump in or understand half the words 25 percent of the words and things that they were saying because they're just like such at a top tier level and i'm just like ah, yeah, wow that's ridiculous like i can't even begin to even start like understanding it that was how uh that was just that's like that's their knowledge of poker so when you put me on a range and spectrum of against those people at the solve for y table like i'm obviously not even close um i guess when you talk about the general public and general population yes i'm certainly above average but i know that like there's such a long ways to go if i ever wanted to play 510 yeah i'm not even ready to play 510 regularly i guess you are playing 510 not regularly and, regularly, and i right. think you did you jump in a 1020 the other day? I've played, I think, two 1020 sessions, um, both when I was in on the West Coast. I just doing it for the content and also, you know, just. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> two wish to fall, and now you like two wish to not play those games, in my humble <laughs> opinion. Uh, yeah, it's. I wish I was good, but I, I don't. I'll do it for the content, but I won't do it for any other reason, I guess. But I, I, I do think you obviously been getting better 
Um, so that's and, one thing. Yeah. The other thing is you, like you said, you, you want it to learn and you are willing to absorb information, right? Because I know you were jumping into Trevor's um, weekly session about reviewing the actual whole episode and talk about the, the actual different hand, different situations. Yeah, um, that was great. Right, His analysis exactly. is great. And then you just, you, you know, in, I'm a terrible player too, so I shouldn't be saying anything, but I just think that when you learn from anyone who's better than you and just talk to them, you just get better no matter what. Um, right, and, yeah. And that's like, very important. Yeah, the thing is, I guess for me, that helped me get better was just understanding that I didn't know anything about poker and if i can just absorb information like a sponge and whether i agreed with it or disagreed with it regardless it's still very helpful to see other different perspectives and especially like jumping into trevor's thing i don't know why that doesn't get more views because it's like such helpful information it was just dissecting every single hand. he was dissecting hands on top of like obviously self wire that does dissect the hands right. so it was just like value on top of value yeah i'm gonna and- check it out i haven't yet but i'm gonna get into it and I know South of Y, they obviously also have uh, another segment called On a Second Thought, which is analysis on what they spoke out loud after the fact as well. So, yeah. and that's part of the paid content and, and it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I need to check it out. I think it's like nine, like 10 bucks a month. It's just, I need to check it out. <laughs> yep. how, and, we, how did... and we have no affiliation with South of Y. So, <laughs> Berkey, if you see this, <laughs> you know, yeah. affiliate links. Send over. <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on, get us on. So, how did you get approached to to get on Salt for a while, or did you reach out to them, or was it a? I heard they did a vlog. They do their like weekly vlogcast or something, and they Berkey mentioned something about having a vlogger session, and then I got the clip sent my way where he mentioned a few different people, and I was like, well, yeah, I'm down. So I I just DM'd him, say, like, hey, if you need like a spot or something, like I'm always in. So I'm going to jump in and- now. Let me let me say something real quick. Get in there. <laughs> so <clears throat> we're all rec players, right? We have day jobs and we play when we can. Do you consider yourself a rec player or are you a pro now? Um I like so even when I graduated school, I mm-hmm. always relied on poker as a significant source of income. So by that definition, I guess you can say pro, but like I don't I'm not good you enough don't. to call myself a pro, you know. <laughs> You always say that. You seem to downplay your skills or where you're at. I think you're doing pretty well for yourself. It's very humble. Uh, you're very humble. Yeah, I mean, I just understand. Typical like, Asian. There's... Typical Asian. <laughs> <laughs> like, on this spectrum of pros, I am not even, like, touching top 20% or top uh, 80%. Like, I'm bottom 20% here in terms of, like, skill level, I think, of the pros, if you would All right. But technically speaking, you play – Every day, and you even do two a days, as I understand. When I travel, yeah, now? that's that's um, oh well, yeah, when I went to Vegas and stuff, that was I was I was only out there for a few days, so I had to try uh-huh. to get as much content as possible, and that was a lot of poker. <laughs> Man, needed needed a good week of rest after that one. I, hear you. I mean, two things, right? One is as long as you're better than the rest of the table, then you're good. <laughs> um, and you don't need to be better than the whole table you just need to be better than more than half a table you know the spot then pick your spots yeah you avoid you avoid you know the better player um you know that's actually a poker pro skill to be able to table select right you find the game right. that makes sense to play and um being a rep player i'm bad at that um <laughs> so just to put that out there um but the second thing is um you know sometimes you just have to play against better player to get better that's the other thing so yeah 100 percent. you gotta like be in uncomfortable spots to just have the experience with it that's why whenever i when i did play those two sessions of 10 20 it was just like all right we're gonna be uncomfortable and I think the vlog's gonna like it. So, so that's gonna that, that like I get very incentivized by doing things for content and doing things for the vlog. And it's obviously helped me get better just by like being uncomfortable. As much as I'd love to play one three all the time, I don't think people want to see as much one three action compared to like two five. So that was what the year of 2020 was supposed to be about was 
was where 2019 I knew I was gonna I knew I was a profit one three player after playing for a whole year and then 2020 was trying to figure out if I could be profit at two five and so far it's been going well um now that leap to five ten is not I don't think I'm gonna make that for a while <laughs> but we'll see but that's okay that's okay um yeah you just the goal, have to learn yeah. and get better yeah the goal is to uh make the content anyways I think very content oriented first, which is a little bit of a, of a different perspective from uh, the other people. We were speaking about other kinds of content and I was looking at your personal channel, the Ethan Yao channel, and you have some really cool inspirational uh, videos on there. And you mentioned Gary V. Um, can you talk to me about, or talk to us about uh, your, 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 your other channel and what you're trying to do there? Yeah. Um... The whole thing, what's weird about the other channel is that, you know, it's Gary V has been a big inspiration as to like everything I've done in terms of content and just like doing stuff. So he obviously is like a big marketer and he's really good at building brands and all this stuff. And the thing with what I've realized with the Rampage Poker thing was like, all right, I built a brand around Rampage Poker. And the issue with that is that it's not lasting and it's not actually stuck to me because I've like I said, I've done other YouTube ventures in the past and the last gaming channel that was like kind of like that was the biggest thing I ever did. It hit like 13,000 subscribers. It was about a small game called Madden Mobile, but that name was under Rampage. And when that game died, the channel died and the lasting effects or whatever, like career I had, I was in college or whatever, but like I didn't like that opportunity died for me. So I understand like YouTube has a pretty like large it, the youtube doing youtube has like this bell curve of the life cycle and i don't want that when eventually the rampage poker channel dies like i still want to have like some sort of opportunity to build from it and not just be totally screwed financially <laughs> uh because i know that like eventually something will happen where youtube poke youtube uh will be irrelevant or poker will be irrelevant or rampage poker becomes irrelevant so I want to do something uh, for under my like name and brand. So ultimately I can have something to fall back on. Wow. And also I also just, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of topics I always wanted to talk about and I don't know, I'm really deep or at least very interested in like the whole stock space, investing space and, you know, trying to build passive income and all that stuff and doing other so like pushing Weeble. Oh yeah. Affiliate links are all always yeah. in the description of my videos, <laughs> but That's awesome. yeah, I'm very impressed. It's, it's just like another, it's also kind of like a passion project. Cause then I just get to have this creative space and just talk, whatever, talk about whatever I want. And then obviously my buddy, Carl, who edits the videos, he does a really good job of making them all look really good and super high quality. So the production value is there. We're just trying to see uh, how far it can go. So who knows your setup when you do your, um, on your personal channel, your 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 vlogs on your personal channel, your setup is very professional. Do you have any like experience with like photography at all? Is that, that all is, you? That's all my buddy Carl who edits. Oh, me. okay. That's, that's his room. <laughs> he he wanted to make a very like minimalistic but also very like professional background, mm. and it's it's phenomenal. You it know, works. We, we shoot all the videos there. He has all the lighting set up. He bought a bunch of equipment for it because he wants he want he's trying to be a full time videographer and editor and everything. So mm -hmm. uh, it, he made it look phenomenal. He, <laughs> he spent like so much time messing with the lights and like adding depth between the subject and the background and all that stuff. I noticed yeah. it because that's the kind of thing I'm working on. Um, my younger brother has a production company. 43 degree films and he uh asked me if i wanted to join so i've been trying to step up my game so i'm on youtube learning uh film editing lighting sound all, all these things at once and trying to do a poker vlog outside of my nine to five outside of having uh two kids and a and the fiance so you know my schedule is pretty like jammed you're, packed. you're all over the place i'm all over the place you you're know? busy but it's a good thing mm -hmm. trying to be like you ethan <laughs> oh, when, I grow up, when i grow up i want to be like ethan <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just lucky i i'm young and single and i don't really have any responsibilities besides myself and that doesn't matter i'm just whatever speaking of being <laughs> single 
I did see on your personal uh, YouTube channel, you did you had a Tinder date, a helicopter date. Yeah. Did <laughs> what that. was that like? How did that happen? Uh, so also inspired by another YouTube channel I watch a lot of called Yes Theory. They just mm. make, I don't know if you guys ever heard of them, but they do really cool stuff. It's like very inspiring, motivating, and like it's a good overall message and theme. But they did something, they've made a few videos very similar, like doing Tinder challenges. And I want to do something similar myself, just like, why not? Uh, just mix things up. It was a different kind of video. And yeah, Nicole, like she was a, she's a good friend of mine. So I already knew her, but we did meet on Tinder. So like, I didn't, I tried the whole like messaging, like, it's so weird. I tried the thing of randomly, the first message I send is like, Hey, I have this like ridiculous plan for a video. And, and it's, it involves flying in a helicopter with a random person. Like, Hey, you down? Obviously no, no one's going to say yes to that. You smashed the, uh, the bracelet event. Do you see yourself playing in any more substantial events coming up? Um, I think Daniel Negreanu may have hinted that the WSOP uh, is going to be postponed to like November. I think that's the rumor going on right that now. Too. Um, do you see yourself playing at that time in any of these bigger, larger events? Or, you know, what's your future for tournament play or, you know, coming up? Um, I've always thought I definitely want to play more tournaments. I just want to stay within my means for a tournament because like it just adds up a lot. If you just play like, especially live tournaments, like I've figured out that like $500 for a live tournament is like pretty much the minimum for any like half decent significant tournament. So if I'm going to start, so I'm going to go to Miami uh, late April for the WPT or not Miami, but wherever it is, the hard rock. And I thought about playing the main and I don't think I'm going to because it's 3,500 bucks and that just adds up to be a lot, especially for someone who like, I know that I'm just, it's like I'm long-term minus EV on that. So, you know, that's a lot, but I want to play more tournaments. Maybe I'll mix in like one of those side tournaments here and there, but um, if there's anything like that has good value, that's like a larger field and a lower buy-in, then sure. I think I, I think I have to. But I definitely want to be in Vegas for the WSOP whenever that comes back because I've never really experienced that atmosphere and everyone says it's like the most ridiculous thing in the world. So, Yeah, we all I, want to do that. Yeah. I also yeah. have a, a good friend. His name is uh, Anthony Rafter. He's an Irish poker pro. And he says that Ireland has a poker season and it's right around this time. Like they're starting to pop off with their Irish main events. So maybe that's a trip that we could plan, guys. Come on, let's do it. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. That'll be a tough trip to sell. I'm not <laughs> flying. Not right. for a while. All right. <laughs> we'll work on it. We'll wait for the uh, the bell curve of Corona to go down, and then we'll we'll reconvene on that one. I, um, I I remember your video when you were filming in your, I guess your college dorm or something. Those are rough, man. <laughs> oh, really? Those are really rough. Yeah, are they it still looks up? like looks like an attic type thing or yeah. are they still up like, there on your channel they're up yeah i gotta look that. i gotta look at that <laughs> i didn't even like i didn't even edit it like so i just so every time i paused and i didn't know what to say i just kept it in there so it's rough it's rough i gotta see that for it's shits authentic. and giggles it's yeah. authentic a nightmare your favorite Sorry. experience as a as a with your poker vlog i mean besides winning the wsop right what would you say your 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 top moment was or top experience um it would probably be like the meetup game that brad and that we went to an mgm like that atmosphere was crazy ah um, i missed that one damn <laughs> <laughs> right uh yeah it was ridiculous and then at the time i had a really small channel but even like seeing a few people that watched the videos yeah um and they were like you're one of those that said hi and i was like oh sick <laughs> that's it, it seemed like a little real and um and that whole time, that whole experience was crazy. Like they've never, like that room has never been blown up that much before being super full, having a hundred people on the wait list. So that was uh, an all time moment for so sure. I was there all day, right? I got there in the morning and there were so many people talking crap about it because they didn't know who the vloggers were. And they were saying, it's going to be big, stick around, stick around. And then table after table was getting set up and reserved. And it was just amazing to see all that, all that happen. But my session was was really poor. Um, I did really bad, and then of course I had to leave. But I did get the chance to meet you, so that that, that was nice. 
the two five games were i remember because i mean i was also very new into poker like i remember the two five uh player pool was pretty tough it seemed definitely above average of a normal two five game it seemed like in in the east coast uh, the game tend to be a little harder in my humble opinion um obviously i think the softest game in we'll just say united states for now is probably like la LA is, say. LA is good action um, for sure from a very limited experience. Right. And then, um, you know, we'll say Texas, probably the, the second bigger batch. And then Vegas depend on the number of tourists uh, around Vegas time. Um, yep. There's there's a good amount of people in Vegas now. Oh. Or at least when I was. The Vegas game are uh, popping uh, based yeah. on my understanding. I want to start playing on some streams. <laughs> Like Texas Card House and um, you know, um, do you guys know of any other? Uh, there's a uh, lot in Texas. That, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot popping up because I think uh, so those rooms are starting to see the value in mm-hmm. having some sort of online media presence. So yeah, there's a few in Texas. There's one in Austin. I'm going to the Lodge. It's also in Austin uh, in May, I think. So that's cool. There's another one called Best Bet in Jacksonville. They're doing a stream. Yes, yes. And I saw that. There's obviously the bike and hustlers doing one in, in LA as well to like kind of compete against them. So there's a mm-hmm. lot of different things happening. So it's cool to see. I gotta do think that, that some of the rooms in New Hampshire around me wanted to do it too. Really? Yeah, I, was, I was gonna say, do you think that uh, the Boston card room would be receptive to you, Ethan, doing a call out? Hey, guess what? On this date, I'm doing this uh, meetup game. It's gonna be such and such tables, and then. You put it out in the vlog and you see, you know, what you could reel in. Um, yeah, there will be a meetup game soon. Uh, it for now, like in New Hampshire, it didn't, I don't really like it's whatever that makes the most sense for the casino in New Hampshire. They're only playing six handed. So it's not like they can fill a bunch of people like normally if it was nine handed. But yeah, there's going to be a meetup game coming soon. End of May. And it'll be that features another, you. I'm, I'll be there. And another person will be there too, so it'll be fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Breaking news, left and right. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> there it is. You hear? You heard it here first. That's awesome. Congratulations, man. So yeah, it'll be a fun weekend for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to make that one, whatever that is. Let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to find that yeah. date out. And we'll another vlogger will be there, so it'll be like a dual thing. And another nice. vlogger. I mean, yes. if I'm there and, and Keith is there, there we go. Multiple. <laughs> or, we got like five boom. in the house. Come on, let's let's build this thing up. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> I'm not a vlogger yet. Not yet. At least. Yeah, exactly. We need to we need to change you, Panda. Let's get be you whatever you want to be, Panda. I don't know how you guys edit those videos. You could oh. learn. I could show you everything I know. No, no, no. It's it's not just that. It's the time. Oh. Like I yeah. barely sleep right now with my only regular work. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't even know how you guys do that, which is crazy. All nighters. I mean, respect to you guys. Respect what is to you what guys is sleep? I yeah, I'm, I'm too old to not sleep. You know, that's the problem. <laughs> and I recently just went, came back from a trip to Maryland, like two weekends ago, and that two they had like five, six, two, five games running, and that was that was a good that was a good game, for sure. When you have all that selection, and then they have like twenty different one threes running during the weekend, which is they just pack the whole room, which is nice to see. So they, those games are pretty good for action. You need to go down to uh, National Harbor next time too. National Harbor yeah. games, even I, I would argue is even better than live Maryland. Live. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I gotta figure something out with National Harbor. <laughs> we'll get that. Let going. us know when you move, man. <laughs> yeah, Mar- I was also thinking Maryland's a really nice spot to live too, as someone who's trying to get out of the Northeast. Yeah, uh, my fiance was looking at that. She's pushing that. Soup. It like such a friendly, nice neighborhood spot to live. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to play anywhere in the DMV area, you know, drop Panda a line, man, and maybe we, we could join you. Yeah, how, yeah, you guys still are a four close, hour right? drive. Uh, <laughs> Three, four hour drive. But yeah, we'll try to make <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> you don't go to Atlantic City at all, do you? I've never been, and I tried to. I think the only poker I'm running around is the Borgata, right? And Harris. Borgata and Harris. Harris. Okay, yeah. I called. Borgata, they're like so anti-filming. So yeah, no well, yeah. I just got kicked out of both those places recently. Really? <laughs> for, for recording. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm editing that now. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, you still at least you have the content, whatever. You can I got the content. It. 
but they threatened me. I was so scared they were gonna like, you know, take me in the back room like in the movies. <laughs> but uh, the poker manager, the security person um, walked me through the casino Oh, the yeah, parking the garage. Oh. I was so nervous. <laughs> wow, that was that, that's like a legit DePaulo situation when he got kicked out. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I saw you that. Get, you mm-hmm. escorted out. But now oh, he's wow. back. So I mean, you know, I guess if you do enough apology, you know, enough apologizing, and uh, they'll accept oh. you back. I don't know if I don't know if you apologize at all. <laughs> I don't know that. I, I don't think he apologized. <laughs> no, but I think I think there's a formal written letter that you have to to write to get back Jeez. in. But he still can't record, so it's like, like yeah, like yeah, you can play, you can still play the tournaments and all that stuff. I guess in my perspective, you know, if you're there for content, it's like yeah, yeah, but he's there exactly, he's there for content, exactly. So, so you can't right. really post there. Ethan, what's the largest punt you've ever? Ooh, made? good question. I literally just edited that video today. Top five largest punts. <laughs> um, I mean that it's recent. It was in 2020. Okay. But not recent. Um, yeah, this one number one is when I played at Ocean's Eleven and I played ten twenty and literally the first hand I sit down at, I punted my whole stack. It was like a three k buy in. Literally, welcome to the game. Minus three k. Next. Uh, yeah, it was. I walked in. We. It was. It was right when you pay the time. So they were doing bomb pots to play the time, and I get. I, I get a good flush draw. And the guy turns a small pair with a lower flush draw, and we go all in on the turn, and that was three k. Wow! It's like <laughs> wow, warm welcome, sick. <laughs> and how are you with PLO? Do you like PLO? I love it. Love I don't it. really know much, but I, it's a lot of fun. It's like a new game that I want to learn. Mm-hmm. I just wish people liked watching more PLO content because I definitely would play a lot more. Yeah, I see. Um, Mimi's into trying. PLO. Yeah. Mm-hmm doing the coaching stuff too it was super helpful i watched that one where like he broke down all the hands but yeah if only people watched more plo i'd love it right yeah you're, you're, you're a numbers guys obviously so you you go by what the what the youtube analytics say and you you try to yeah go in that direction i tried you know, yeah try, ironically try to balance it between like what i want to do I like doing these. Yeah, trying but to balance YouTube balance says here. that these uh, videos don't really do so well. But for me personally, uh, c- being creative and collaborating and interviewing people who I'm fans of, like I watch your channel, I watch Trevor's channel, and this is and Jamin, obviously, you know, of course. So it's just like good for me and my creative spirit. And I think for everybody on here, like we like to talk to people who we enjoy watching. We like to think that we're uh, in the same realm, and we like to yeah. rub elbows. And it's been yeah. a great experience, but yeah, the eyeballs aren't on it, so I don't know. Yeah, it's a it, balance of, I mean, it's a balance of doing what you want to do versus like what gets views. And I think like long term, if you just do whatever you want to do, then you win. That's what it's, it's a Gary Vee approach, right? It. Just like I've been watching a lot of Gary Vee since I saw your yeah. episode. He he's big time. Just like do whatever maximizes your happiness, and like whatever happens, happens. Mm-hmm. Because if you just sell yourself up for views, and it's like, well, you're just silly. Like if you're not if you're unhappy just making these like random videos that you don't like making them like what's the point? What yeah. is the point? So yeah, and I think also you can like build a stronger brand with these longer longer form like podcasts like videos because mm-hmm. then you actually get like genuine true followers with longer content. Although like the views aren't there, you still build like a stronger base. Mm-hmm. So who knows? And I see That's- now that you're you're on you're on TikTok. You're you're. You're taking uh, your videos and repurposing them for TikTok now? Big time. Yeah. I, I got to get into that, stuff. man. <laughs> yeah. Now, anyone that's trying to make videos, if you're not doing TikTok, it's like a missed opportunity for sure. It's be- like, it's just, you get free advertisement by just posting because the algorithm just pumps everything and just tests it out. And okay. if it's good content, then it gets through. So and then you get a bunch of eyeballs on it. Are you plugging your YouTube stuff or is TikTok its own in, like independent thing for you? Uh, I was trying to, I was experimenting and see how, what the conversion is like. It's pretty much its own thing now. Yeah, the conversion to YouTube is pretty bad. Okay. So because like TikTok just targets a different demographic mm-hmm. and it's so fast paced where they just see one video after another, after another, uh, like it, it's not amazing when you try to push them into YouTube when the videos are 15, 20 minutes long, in my case, mm-hmm. where they just want to watch like a 30 second long hand and whatever happens, happens. 
getting better at that. I'm chopping my clips up. Um, I just started reformatting for Instagram. Like I put, I put, yeah. I'll put a hand on Instagram. Now I'm going to, I'm thinking of going to TikTok, man. I might blow up on TikTok. Yeah, no, <laughs> literally anyone. It's ridiculous how you just never know. Like I have the most ridiculous video go viral on TikTok. I had mm -hmm. deuces. I limped in, called a raise pre. I whiffed on the flop and I fold to a C-bet. Like two mil views. It's ridiculous. Really? That yeah. seems just so boring. That's like every hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, just yeah. every I, normal spot. You literally, the yeah. So you get the ability to experiment and just post and pump out stuff at volume and then whatever sticks, sticks. And then you go from there and figure out uh, where you want to focus on. But that's the cool thing about TikTok. You're not like, you're not like penalized for pumping up content. You that's know what I think the first video is going to be, Panda? Us was, dancing on the rooftop of the oh Harris God, garage. No, that was bad. Yeah. That was very bad. <laughs> I look yeah. back at it, I cringe. Oh my Lord. Yeah, me too. But hey, I think oh. it'll work though. So bad. <laughs> oh yeah, try it out. I think people would like that. <laughs> try to pump it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, everyone loves the dances on TikTok, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they'll play well. All right, what else can we get into? Ed. All right, I got a question here. I wrote a couple down. Please. Um, so at what point did you feel like, you know, after playing poker for a while that you, you know, you looked at it and you said, you know, I could do something with this. I could make money from this. I could make content. At what point? Did your, you know, your views start coming in? You start seeing that you're making profit. You know, that's really my. Uh, um, my I angle. always do YouTube as a really good opportunity from the get go because I did have the one channel go moderately well, I guess. it. Uh, I was making like 600 bucks a month at the time when I was making the gaming channel. And that was the peak. And as a college student, 600 bucks a month is like very good really good i can get all the beer i want on the weekends <laughs> um but yeah i always knew that if it was really scalable i guess and if you can do it right then you're doing well and when after when i punted that 500 bucks first time playing poker went on youtube saw mimi and brad Owen were the top two and i don't know if they reached 100,000 subscribers yet but i knew that it was a very small niche and it was growing because all their videos were doing really well their views were doing better than how many subscribers that they had so that just means it was growing and there's not that many content creators. I think it was them two. And then obviously Johnny, Jamin, and then the trooper who was making videos. And I thought like, okay, so this is an opportunity. It's a growing niche. So it's not like saturated. Like if you want to make gaming videos, like call of duty videos, I tried to do that a bunch. And like everyone's playing call of duty. Every kid growing up wants to be a content creator in call of duty and play because everyone plays. So it's not as hard to get into it and break through. So um, I just knew from the beginning, it was a good opportunity if I could get there. Just growing there and getting there is the really hard part of making, a, editing a video for like 10 hours in the beginning and not knowing if it would get views. And when it does get a few views, it's still a little demotivating compared to what other people are getting and all that stuff. It's like, if you spend 10 hours on a video and uh, it just doesn't perform as well as you want it to, and then it's a little demotivating so starting out is like the hardest part but it's just trying to like grind through that and try to break through and then uh you know after a year or so i finally hit like ten thousand subscribers so but it took like 100 uh, over 100 videos to get there oh okay i'm gonna like share subscribe everybody come on all right of now. that yeah. if you're still Everyone's watching channel. <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll edit this you know come on everyone <laughs> do this if you're still watching now hit that like button helps the channel grow a lot also that's so comment button. down below exactly the subscribe button costs you absolutely nothing so <laughs> what's stopping you yes. it helps the algorithm <laughs> um we're coming up on our time again ethan i just wanted to say that this has been awesome thank you for your time um is there anything that you want to say to our audience Besides like uh, and subscribe, <laughs> anything you want to plug on your side? Yeah. So, so after you guys uh, like comment and subscribe on this channel and video, um, I don't know. I think the overall theme is just like, I don't know what I've taken away a lot from Gary Vee and that's how I've been able to be successful so far. Just like do whatever you want to do. 
I just posted that on my personal channel, just like do whatever makes you happy. Who, who cares what other people say? Uh, I think people judge too much and people care too much about other people's opinions, but like, you know, if you want to play poker, go play poker. If you want to make content, go make content. Just start. Follow That's your all. heart, I guess. There you go. Perfect. Shoot. I think this is a perfect place to, to wrap this up. Um, I think we'll be in contact. I don't know if you want a version of this, but um, I'm going to probably work on this and post mine in about a week. If anybody wants a copy of this, uh, you know, let me know. Um, Sweet. Ethan, it was a pleasure. I mean, I, I think uh, I think you're a great person. And thank you so much for taking the time out to meet with all of us who are obviously fans and keep on pumping out videos. Yeah, nice talking to you guys. Super cool meeting you. Definitely looking forward to, uh, I'll, I'll look, like send me the YouTube link when it's up. I'll definitely check okay. it out for sure. Sounds good. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Ethan. I really appreciate this. Sweet. Nice talking to you guys. You guys are awesome. Take care, guys. I'm All sure right. uh, next next time I come back to like Maryland or something like that, we'll uh, we'll get a session or something. Let us know. And uh, if you ever want to go to Atlanta City, well, it doesn't make sense to go to Atlanta City, but you know, um, maybe like we're closer together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Take care.